Obesity is a complex metabolic disorder representing a remarkable risk factor for the onset of different chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes type 2 and cancers. In 2020, 39 million children under 5 years old were overweight or obese. This has become a major public health problem worldwide, triggering action from governments as obesity is preventable. 54% of Chilean children under 14 years old are obese, being the highest value in the Latin American region. This is the rich reason why risk managers took action and developed a comprehensive strategy to tackle obesity. One of the implemented measures was the front label packaging informing of high level sugar in processed food. This triggered the increase in the use of sweetness replacing sugar to avoid having the high level sugar sign. This increase reached most sweet processed foods, even those targeting infants and children. This posed the question, is consumption of sweetness still safe in Chile? Is there any population at risk? Are regulatory limits still protecting the population? To answer those questions, something extraordinary happened. Collaboration. The Chilean Food Safety Agency, ACHIPIA, under its scientific cooperation agreements, saw scientific advice from its partners, the European Food Safety Authority and the German Institute of Risk Assessment, to conduct a dietary exposure assessment on sweetness requested by the Ministry of Health of Chile. ACHIPIA assessed four sweetness, acesulfan K, aspartame, sucralose and stevyl glycosates, all of them authorized to be used by the Chilean regulation. The sources of data used were the National Food Consumption Survey and analytical data from the official surveillance program for food additives. Four exposure scenarios were assessed, considering consumption variations and brand loyalty. Results show neither of the sweetness assessed exceeded its acceptable daily intake ADI in any population groups and exposure scenarios evaluated in this study, concluding the likelihood of exceeding ADI of the forced sweetness assessed is very low by the consumption of the food considering this assessment. This conclusion allowed regulators to make informed decisions regarding updating regulatory limits, surveillance and control programs closing a virtuous circle where trust was the key element allowing this synergistic collaboration to happen. The sum of the efforts brought more benefits than every single actor working alone. This is a successful example of a food safety system.